Hey, Think Really, Eddie Wilson here. Thanks so much for joining us on the podcast today. It's always my privilege, and I believe that it's my, let's say, maybe calling in life to be a part of, of helping you find uh, your, your natural journey in the real estate space. Uh, started Think Really in 2013 as a third generation real estate investor, and I just love bringing my friends and the people that are doing great things in the industry uh, to you to share knowledge and information. It's not about the guru you can go spend thousands and thousands of dollars on teaching you something they don't actually do. It's about me bringing people in that actually do the work and then they'll talk to you about it. Uh, I love I love that we get to do that on a daily basis. So I want to say a quick thank you to our podcast sponsor before we get into our guest. The podcast is brought to you today by CV3 Financial Services. When you're taking on a new investment project, having a trusted lender is key. Count on CV3 for your fix and flip rental, cash out, or rate and term refi needs. Visit cv3financial.com forward slash think realty uh, and always support our sponsors as a thank you for supporting us. Um, today, um, my guest is somebody that's kind of revolved around in my world for a long time. We went to mastermind a long time together and uh, uh, looked at different uh, investments and things like that together. Uh, but Greg Bond, thanks so much for being a part of the show today. Thanks for having me. Andy. Yeah, Greg today is uh, representing the property manager guys um, as a primary business that you have here in out of Orlando. Right. Um, but you're no stranger to like all types of investing. I mean, since I first met you, which you're primarily doing single family, then you moved into uh, assisted livings, uh, self storage. Uh, now warehouse space and light industrial. I mean, you've kind of done it all. Yeah, it's uh, it's been an interesting journey. I, I always love learning something new. Yeah. Right. What's the next thing out there? And uh, that's what really uh, I, I think propels me. That the next thing I love listening to podcasts. Right. Sure. You never know what little gem you're going to pick up that's right. really going to help you propel to that yeah. that next level. So. Yeah. What I love though is I think that most of you listening or watching um, should put yourself into Greg's shoes because. <clears throat> the successful real estate investors never stay doing the same thing for life. They just don't. I mean, I, I grew up in a home of a real estate investor and he loved single family and then he started building duplexes and then he started doing, it's just like there's a natural progression because a real estate investor is one who's looking for opportunity in the market. They're not stuck on an asset class, you know? And uh, so from building crypto facilities like you've done to, you know, assisted living and self-storage, it's like I think oftentimes it's, it's more about understanding the marketplace and taking advantage of what's going on. I 100% agree with that. Yeah. That's, that's kind of, and a lot of times, Eddie, we just kind of lucked into it. Yeah. Um, we started uh, buying single family homes in the, in the 90s. Yeah. Right. Great time um, to buy. Was, was wonderful. They mm -hmm. had, uh, 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 They'd range fixed rate financing rate. They'd put out a bid uh, by zip code every two weeks and mm. sell the properties. And it was it was just a great thing until it disappeared in 2001. Sure. We took a little break, jumped back into it in 2008. Didn't realize how good it was at that mm -hmm. point. Uh, we bought a majority of our portfolio at that point. I think we ended up with 80 to 90 single family homes. Uh, at that point, though, in 2008, couldn't get financing. Sure. So it was all cash. So I'm holding all these cash properties. Mm -hmm. And the ones I bought in the 90s are paid off. And I went, wow. Is throwing off decent income, not great income, mm -hmm. uh, but we, we looked at re-leveraging and we call it our, our real life monopoly year because mm -hmm. we took uh, four s greenhouses yeah. and turned them into a red hotel. And what year was that? That was 2022. Okay. We, we actually got lucky again and just timed it right before the interest rates went up. Mm -hmm. So it was sure. the first part of latter 2021 and the first part of 22 mm -hmm. right before the, the rates increase. So. Sure. So talk to me about that process because I know a lot of our, um, it's interesting because it, this is a generational thing. Um, my dad still falls into this too, where I like leverage, he hates leverage. Uh, you know, free and clear means security to him, free and clear means missed opportunity to me. You know, like, yeah. and so I want you to tell that story a little bit deeper. You took these free and clear houses and you did something with them that gave you a big advantage. Can you just walk us through that yeah. process? R really, it started when looking at, I always track my return on, on investment, mm -hmm. but never my return on equity. So yeah. really, I did. That's I, a great point. Say that again, because that's, a, that's really important. So tracking your return on equity mm -hmm. versus just a return on your investment. My right. return on investment was always very good because I bought at such a low cost. Sure. Right? And the return was okay, but when I started tracking my return on equity, I went, this is terrible. Because essentially it's zero, right? Like you're yeah, not making anything on your equity. Yes. Yeah. So we, we looked at it and said, just to, you know, to simplify it down, you know, we got four houses, let's mm -hmm. 
um, and each of them is worth $250,000. Mm. But as a whole, what I'm making on an individual house is about $750 a month, mm -hmm. right after my taxes, insurance, and maintenance, and all the costs and sure. fees that go into that, yeah. property management fees. And so I looked at it and said, okay, four houses times 750 is 3,000 a month, times 12 months, I'm making $36,000 a year on these group of four homes. Sure. Now, what happens if I can basically re-leverage those homes through a 1031 exchange, which, right, no capital gains, right. don't have to recapture the depreciation, and I take that and I go to the bank and I say, Mr. Banker, I've got these four homes that I've now got sold mm -hmm. through a 1031, my intermediary is holding that million dollars, I'd like to buy something now, how much will you lend me? And they look at my, my financials and they look at my tax returns and mm -hmm. they say, oh, you're a good risk, we'll loan you 75% loan to value. Mm -hmm. So now if I've got a million dollars, they loan me three, I can now buy a $4 million asset. Right. And we looked at it and said, we want to buy industrial. Mm -hmm. So we want to buy small bay, we want to buy single use industrial. One real quick statement, what he said, just I don't want you to miss it, is he's saying, because now he has a million dollars, right? He's got essentially a million bucks that he can play with. He can go get a, a, an asset at basically, you know, four times that amount, right? And Correct. so, so he's talking about leveraging it again to go buying. Uh, I don't want Thanks. you to miss that point because he's using the cash that he's taking from these houses that then he's going to go leverage and he's going to go get a bank loan, right, on this new. So, asset. so I started out very much like your father, yeah. saying, uh, "Paid off property is right. great. This is yeah. what I want. Yeah. Pay, pay it it's off. Cash flow, it's cash life, flow. No liability." Yeah. And then, but then, I, then you start analyzing and looking at it, and you go, mm -hmm. "Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. there, there might be a better way." And that's when I kind of yeah. swung towards your way of thinking, where I'm missing yeah. opportunity. Yeah. And uh, especially building wealth for that next generation, right? You go, wow, buying a $4 million building. I'm, I'm a broker, right. right? So on top of getting a great deal, they also say, oh, here's 3% of this $4 million purchase. <laughs> right, here you Because yeah, you're representing yourself. Yeah, here's right. $120,000. Sure. So instead of making $36,000 on those four houses on a $4 million building, I'm making someplace between, call it 10 to 12,000 a month. Right. So I'm making someplace between 120 and say 150,000. Mm -hmm. So I've quadrupled my cash flow. Right. They give me a $120,000 kicker. I do a cost segregation on that $4 million commercial building, which wipes out my 120 commission plus all my tax for probably four to five years, if not more. Yeah. And it's like, whoa, wait a minute, if I buy the right property and I buy some type of value add, mm -hmm. which in most cases we've done, right. then I can sell it at a cap rate mm -hmm. after we've increased that value, pull, you know, generate another million to two million dollars in, in, in right. profit, sell that, 1031 it into, now I've got say $3 million in three to five years, mm -hmm. I go back to the bank, Mr. Banker, I've now got $3 million, how right. much will you lend me? Yep. Greg, you're a great risk, we love working with you, you've made every payment, blah, 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 yeah. and we'll loan you $9 million. <laughs> right. So I take my three and their nine, and now I go either buy f three or four, three to four million dollar buildings, right. or a $12 a million dollar asset, yeah. right. and that throws off Fifty thousand dollars a month, right? Right, and I do a cost segregation on that, right? Right, and they pay me three percent of that twelve <laughs> yeah. million dollars, and right. they say here's a check for six hundred or three hundred and sixty thousand dollars, and I go, wow, where does this stop? So it, it, it. When I started looking at the progression and right. how this can step you forward to really generate some unbelievable wealth, mm -hmm. you know, from starting out with some single family homes. Mm -hmm. And, but I, nobody was really helping me or I, I wasn't looking for the help. I'm right. sure there were people out there that would have helped me right. if I would have said, hey, what's the next step or how do I do this or give yeah. me some ideas. Right. But I kind of just, I did a couple 1031s, didn't understand the power of them. Yeah. And now looking back going, wow, now it becomes how many 1031 iterations do I have left in my life? Right. Right. How many more times can I do this to step this up? How do I teach this to the next generation yeah. so they understand here's how you do it and that value increases, you need cash, yeah. don't sell it, yeah. refinance it, yeah. right? Pull that cash back out, wait till that value hits the top and mm -hmm. the, the economics are right. right, the interest rates are the right, you know, it, it, it's all a cycle. Right. So you hit those cycles properly and, you know, the sky's it's, the limit. I'm a big proponent of it because I think that the wealth of America is actually sitting in their equity. And that's why I made you reiterate what you said because with your equity, you could be gaining cash flow, you could be gaining, I mean like, if, if I just broke it down from a 30,000 foot view, you took assets that were free and clear, you essentially took the equity out of them, and not only did you create 
you know, three times the cash flow. You also created double your net worth and long term, you actually reduced your tax liability. So it actually increased your t cash flow even more. And so it's, it's, what I, it's what I say all the time. And I think that I think people go through phases of their life. And if you're in your 30s and 40s and 50s listening, what, you're, what Greg is doing is what we all should be considering doing. That's why I always say, until I get to a certain point in my life, I'm going to try to double my net worth. And it's Absolutely. very similar to how you do it. I'm going to try to double that. I'm going to 1031. I'm going to try to keep it in, you know, absent of taxation, right? Because taxation is the big erosion of wealth. And I'm going to keep doing that, rolling it. And, and then I'll get to a place where I move from what I call wealth generation to cash flow generation, right? Like, right. and at some point I may or may not need it. I don't know. Who knows? You know, but I could take all that and then ultimately I can put it into just cash flowing assets. You know, like your cash flowing asset, you're already kind of doing it. For me, I'm rolling it, rolling it, rolling it, rolling it, rolling it. I care less about the cash flow now because I have other things that are providing my lifestyle, you know? Right. And so I'm trying to, I'm playing the net worth game. And then at some point I'll convert that, you know, and I, you know, it might be in my late fifties, sixties, whatever it is, you convert that. Then you find things that pay you good, solid, eight, 10, 12%, super safe. And then you pass that net worth on for generations to come. That, that to me is the true strength of real estate that I really feel like people miss. I, I would say w one thing in there is passing that on. Mm -hmm. It's teaching that next generation oh, how to deal with it, right? Because if you don't, yeah. three generations, you're done, right? That third generation is just gonna waste it. Yeah. And, and yeah, they do. now you're starting all over I, again. So. You know, I'm, I'm curious. So I, um, I got heavily criticized on a podcast recently that I was getting interviewed on and they said, how much are you going to pass on to your kids? And, uh, I was said none. And they were like, wait, what, what, wait, what? You're not gonna pass any on to your children. I was like, no, I'm not passing any of my wealth on to my children. And they were like, well, what are you gonna do with it? I was like, I'm putting it in nonprofits. I'm going to give it to kids that I'm going to, that have never heard of me, seen of me, you know, like they're going to get it overseas. And they were like, but what about your kids? I was like, no, I'm going to give my kids every resource in this life to create it themselves. I'll invest in my kids today, I'll help them, but in the end it's like, I'm not gonna die and just give them cash. Like, I always feel like the burden of the wealthy to the next generation is if you pass them resources versus resourcefulness, it becomes this like noose around their neck, right? And so I'm on this quest to try to pass on resourcefulness. Uh, you know, I'll give them every connection, I'll invest in what they're doing, I'll give them every opportunity, education, whatever they, like, I want them to be successful. But, but if they're, if they have to wait till I die to become successful, like I've done this whole thing wrong, you know? Right. So you hear all the time about kids that do absolutely nothing because they're waiting to inherit their parents' wealth. Right. And they, they basically lose their life, yeah. right? They don't yeah. do anything because they're, they're just, well, and then their parents live till they're 90. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. The, and the kids in his seventies, you go, yeah. what'd you do with your life? Yeah. Yeah. I, I waited for my parents to die so yeah. I could. Yeah inherit this well. It, it's, it's, it becomes a burden, you know? And uh, I, I've rarely met a trust fund kid that is happy and fulfilled. Yeah. Rarely. I, I, maybe one in my lifetime, you know? But I've met hundreds and hundreds that are unsatisfied, trying to find their way. It's because they got past resources, not resourcefulness, you know? Um, anyways, uh, I love that. I love that you're, you're kind of like doing that. And I think that, that that needs to be preached and shouted from the, from the mountaintops because I think that's what the American population is missing. People are thinking that the American dream is still owning a house, gaining equity, getting to a retirement age. And it's like they're missing the real value of American real estate, you know? I yeah. love it. So let's talk about um, what you're investing in now. So, um, you know, you're, you're not rolling it into multifamily or self-storage like maybe you were. Like you've really chosen an asset class that you like. Talk to us about that asset right. class. So I, I, I bought a bunch of uh, uh, self-storage facilities, mm -hmm. right? We ran those, we improved them, and then we got unbelievable mm -hmm. offers in 21 and sold yeah. them all out, thinking sure. we were going to just jump back in and buy more. Right. And then we quickly found out that- I was the, waiting. I wanted to invest <laughs> with you, and they never gave me the call. There's, there's, there's no assets <laughs> yeah, out there to purchase right, right. at a, at a uh, cap rate that yeah. we considered sure. a, you know, something mm -hmm. that we could do. So we started buying raw land, mm -hmm. entitling that land and building, but then sure. people start buying the lots. Right. Once we got entitled, they didn't want to go yeah. through that 12 to 18 month process. Right. So then you make a profit there. But what we, in, in basically comparing our self storage uh, uh, time with what we've just bought, because we bought a lot of small bay, mm -hmm. and just for your audience, you know, I've heard it called flex bay, small bay, yeah. but it's basically a little warehouse, a thousand to five thousand square feet, mm -hmm. with a warehouse, a small office, and a bathroom. And it usually is two or three units at a time, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. 
And so when I start comparing and looking and saying, okay, we bought this 50,000 uh, square foot uh, self-storage, and that self-storage, there's a lot of churn, right? Mm -hmm. Monthly leases, people moving out, people not paying, lockouts, this mm -hmm. and that, and contracts being signed, and, and, and the employees to do that with. It's and, as much of a business as it is a real estate play. Oh, it, it absolutely yeah. is. Yeah. And so you look at that and go, okay, here's my bottom line mm -hmm. at the end of the year. And then I, I was able to have compare that because we bought in, we did nine 1031s in 2022, mm -hmm. and some of those were uh, small bay facilities. Sure. So now I got to compare that 50,000 square feet of small bay mm -hmm. and go, okay, I've got you know 10 to 15 tenants in this 50,000 square foot uh, uh, mm -hmm. building that's split up into the individual mm -hmm. units, and all of them are on five-year triple net leases. Mm -hmm. I don't really talk to them on a monthly or quarterly or sure. they send in their check. Yeah. If there's a problem with the roof, we right. get a call and we take care of it. Everything right. else is theirs. We we mow the yard, mm -hmm. right? Take care of the lawn maintenance. And other than that, yeah. we don't hear from it. So there's there's no churn. There's no real business. I have a right. property management company, so they just manage the process. Yeah. And I look at the bottom line at each one and go, I'm making as much on the small bay, the 50,000 square feet of small bay, mm. than I am making on the 50,000 square feet of self storage with, with a, a whole, whole lot, lot less, less <laughs> churn. <laughs> yeah. So, where do I want to spend my time too. and yeah. effort? How many self storage facilities can I manage mm. versus how many small bay facilities can I manage? Sure. The bottom line is about the same. Yeah. Why do you want to spend the time and right. effort yeah. for, for the same amount of money? For sure. Yeah. So, we kind of. And there's such a, there's a massive need for this light, small industrial warehouse space, right? It just, you can't find it right now. Yeah, it, it's, yeah. It, it, in a lot of places we've got waiting lists. Mm -hmm. uh, we bought one up in um, Ocala. Mm -hmm. uh, we were gonna build another facility up there. I love there. that market, by the way. That, that's a booming market. It's a great market. Um, but we were gonna build a, a self-storage facility. So mm -hmm. we bought the land, about five acres, got mm -hmm. ready, and lo and behold, uh, neighborhood storage sold out to public. Mm -hmm. Public storage came in. Now they basically own that marketplace. Sure. Right, and so they dropped rates forty percent. Wow! And we thought we build a new facility; they're gonna they're gonna crush us. Yeah. Why do we want to compete with the, the right the five hundred pound the gorilla boy, yeah. in the market? Yeah. We don't want to do that. So we pivoted and said, okay, now we're gonna do small bay because mm -hmm. I own a small bay seven miles from that facility. Mm -hmm. I know what the rates are. I know right. there's a need there, the demand. So we said, sure. why Hold not? Yeah. So <laughs> that's kind of it's it's been a progression of okay, yeah. learning the the mm -hmm. industry understanding what we're doing, com being able to compare, sure. and then shifting and moving to yeah. to an asset class that I think is, is far superior. I love it. Let's talk about property management real quick um, before we close down the podcast. So you do property management, but it's not just single family. You'll actually manage commercial, you'll manage just about anything, correct? Just about anything. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm managing on my own. That's pretty yeah. much how I got started out is right. managing my own. Uh, in the early days, it was it was a looking back now it was a terrible decision. I should have never managed my own because mm -hmm. I made all the stupid decisions, lost money, you know, didn't vet tenants correctly. Right. Every mistake you could make, I made because yeah. I didn't have the experience. Right. And I look back at you and say, if I would have hired a professional property manager, mm -hmm. I could have utilized my time right. to find more deals to plow back and let them handling it. Sure. Uh, but now because I went through that though. I've been through all of the issues, the I understand it, yeah. them. <laughs> right. I'm coming at it from an investor's perspective. Sure. So that's what I've, who I've drawn to me is a lot of investors that yeah. like the way I manage sure. property. So yeah. it's, you know, we manage 250 doors. Mm -hmm. We could probably manage 15 or uh, 500 yeah. with, we could probably double in size with the staff we've got and what's sure. going on. But, yeah. um, you know, Primarily in the Orlando marketplace just, is just where you Just in the Orlando say. market, I don't yeah. want to move too far out of it. We, yeah. we go up to Ocala. Sure. Um, yeah. So we do Marion, yeah. we do Lake, yeah. we do Volusia, okay. we do Orange Seminole. Yeah. Uh, we got some stuff over in Brevard. Cool. But primarily, it's just uh, Central Florida. How can they? How can they find you if they need their properties managed? Um, our website, okay. thepropertymanagerguys.com or tpmguys.com for short. Okay. Or you can call me personally, 407-252-9658. And uh, awesome. Yeah, we well, appreciate your time today. Always uh, enjoy hanging out. Love, love the mindset you have because I think that we're similar and 
Um, and to me, I've watched the I've watched the growth and the progression you've been in it over the last few, few years, and um, you know it's admirable. And, and I know you got a big heart. And I know you want to give a bunch of it away and do great things, yeah, which absolutely. is which is even more important to me. So appreciate it. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks so much. Sir. One last thank you to our podcast sponsor, which is CV3 Financial Services. Uh, when you're taking on a new real estate investment project, having a trusted lender is key. Count on CV3 Financial for your fix and flip, rental, cash out, or rate and term refi needs. Visit CV3Financial.com forward slash think realty. That's CV3Financial.com forward slash think realty. And one last plug for our Think Realty Plus program. If you're not already a part of Think Realty Plus, it's $14.99 a month. It's the cheapest, greatest deal you're gonna get in the marketplace because you get access to all the information, all the data, all of our conferences, by the way. You get to come to all of our conferences. You get our magazine on your doorstep. Uh, you get access to our resident experts, the monthly calls, so on and so forth. I built it because we wanna be your companion in this real estate investment journey. You wanna hear stories like, Greg, be a part of Think Realty. We've got access to these people that are actually doing the work. They're doing this on a daily basis and we bring them to you consistently. And uh, we just wanna help you out as you grow in this investment journey. Thanks so much for being a part uh, of Think Realty. If you wanna take part in Think Realty Plus, go to thinkrealty.com, use the code LAUNCH, the code LAUNCH, sign up for that and you'll get the $14.99 deal uh, there. Hope to see you soon on a podcast or come to one of our uh, events. We'd love to see you there. Have a great day.